Hello again, and I'm back with a bad influence commentary. Now, this is series one still. We're up to episode number four now, and this aired on November the 19th, 1992. And as it's starting to get cold outside and the winter is drawing in, it feels like an even more appropriate time to Welcome watch. To bad influence. This week, we'll be reviewing the these one programs. you've been waiting for, Sonic 2. Can it live up to the hype? Sonic 2? <laughs> Mega Drive, of course. These programs were based around Christmas when children like me were massively excited about getting the new technology. Just how much do you play to play? Game Gear. Back when batteries lasted five minutes. About a hundred pounds. And always seemed to leak leak. Five and the battery even mercury based batteries. Four pounds. Now, I expect to get years of pleasure out of both the machine and the cartridge. But what about the batteries? How long will they last? Well, this morning we still not long in there. Battery Six batteries, isn't it, for a Game Gear? We're using a Supervision, a Game Boy, a Lynx, and a Game Gear. Supervision. We use brand new standard batteries because they're cheaper. <laughs> The Supervision and the Game Boy take four, the Game Gear and the Lynx take six. My Lynx used to last about an hour on batteries, and my um, power connector had broken on it, so I, I used to get like a few levels into Zybots, and then that would be it. I'd have to start again. Sonic 2 is being released worldwide next Tuesday, or Sonic Tuesday. Sonic Tuesday. A copy of the first ever rough sketch of Sonic given to me by Mr. Canary. I like the bottom left one. He looks like a... Pokemon. Three quarters of a million copies of the Game Gear, Master System, and Mega Drive versions are being shipped to. Oh, I love the music on the Chemical Plant Zone. This is about. Here's James on the Mega Drive version. So, a Sonic 2 review. This game's great. It's everything I expected from Sonic. So many platforms. 39 quid on the Mega Drive. Prices haven't changed much, have they? For the best game out on the Mega Drive. Games. I mean. At first, tell. We, we don't get cartridges now. We just get them downloaded, but they're still about 40 quid when they come out. Great. He's an ally and not an enemy. It's amazingly clever. That's not taking inflation into account. Yeah, a second character which follows you around. This is a great bit. The animation that's gone into this is fantastic. Yeah. Best Sonic game in my opinion. Look at the background. It's called the Casino Night. It's, I think it's set in Las Vegas. Best, this is idea. the best game on the Mega Drive, the best Sonic game. And on the Master System, the best Sonic game is Sonic Chaos. In my opinion. Brilliant game. There's so many different things to see and find. Two-player gate, two-player mode on Sonic 2 was an absolute revelation. I like the two-player game because you yes. can play with friends instead of them just sitting there watching you. This isn't my favourite Sonic game, but it's very well programmed. It's, it's not. It's not your favourite what Sonic game? There's only two on the Mega Drive so far. And so the final scores for Sonic 2. The boys gave it five out of five, and the girls were equally impressed. Five out of five from them too. Yeah, well deserved. Steady there, Spikey. Ah. Hello there. He's got an Amiga 600. I'll finish my Sonic by numbers kit later. My first Triassic cheat today is for Pinball Fantasies on the Amiga. I love these pinball games on the Amiga machines. Uh, Obsession on the Atari STE was balls. an awesome game. I don't know, they just brought out the colours of these machines. So just look at that. That table looks amazing. Then, to keep the balls in play, even when you've been totally incompetent with the flippers, don't type in balls in play, because that would be stupid. Instead, type in digital illusions. Ah, uh, digital illusions. They made it, didn't they? I think they were the company he made. Pinball fantasies and the like. If I say virtual reality to you, I bet this What's is... What's that? Is that an HTC Vive? Mind. And full immersion VR can be a lot of fun, and we'll be looking at the latest games as the series goes on. But there is another kind of VR which doesn't involve a bulky headset. This is a desktop VR system. This flat screen. Well, look at that mouse ball thing. World. This world was designed for the police. It's a recreation of a road traffic accident, and you can see the green car crashing into. Oh man! Look at that. that. Realistic collision. If you like, look at it from different angles. And there it's about to crash. I like this view, it's the view of the phone box. in the phone box across the road. But as well as that, you can use this input. Look at that monitor, that is a thing of beauty. What's that, a 19 inch? To see the accident from any perspective you like, you can move it up and down. Monitors look so much bigger before they were widescreen. By just exerting pressure and pushing and pulling. And I mean, the total you, space looks as much control as you bigger. Like, and you can it, I, I think I prefer. See the scene any way you want. 
four to three, three ratio screens compared to widescreen. Go wild. This underwater world trains people to operate remote control submarines around oil platforms. Wow. There are lots of other applications for desktop VR. For some tasks, it's far more suitable than the immersion system. Look at that frame rate. We must be talking three frames per minute. And in Nottingham, who have a special need for this system. Oh, yeah, madam. Once is served. Oh, and he's out. They've let him out. They say one of the most frustrating things about being disabled is that people have to do things for you. You don't have control over your own world. And it's a problem that Ruth and all my mates here have to face every day. This is the Shepherd School in Nottingham. Many of the children who come here are physically... He's got both Ghostbusters crisps. Get a packet of real Ghostbusters crisps. Yeah, this world is a constant challenge. So imagine a world where you could explore things properly, despite your disabilities. A world where you could go wherever you liked, as fast as you liked, with complete freedom. Welcome right. to that I don't know if you could go as fast as you liked, especially not back then. You're a bit limited by the hardware. Shepherd School. It offers a chance to move about in a way that many of these children have never experienced. This is what I used to do at school <laughs> on the BBC Micro with the Doomsday Machine, where you could have like a virtual walk around cities. Lunch breaks, go into the uh, BBC Micro room, and this was like in the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, and then play around on the Doomsday Machine and just stroll about. It was like an early Google Maps. Children with a hearing disability can learn about signs. Children with a I like her hair is bang on. We zoom in and look at things more clearly, and children with a physical disability can have the power to actually move oh, around. Just smash my tea into the microphone. And learn a sign language called Makaton. It's a basic sign and symbol language which teaches Pick up the phone. difficulties how to communicate. At the moment, there are only eight Makaton symbols in the system, including ball, telephone, and car. Oh, you've nailed it, Andy. I yeah, know, and car. She's very proud of me when I get it. Right? No, she thinks yeah. you're a dick. Often. Come on. <laughs> oh. Can you do the hands? The system oh. was developed by a research oh, scientist at the university, led by David Brown. We develop something, we test it on the kids, oh, we go well, back, we redevelop. And what's been the most popular things with the kids? What do you find they like the most? I think driving around the world in the buildings, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that does look fun. That looks like that virtual, that virtual racing game on the Atari Jaguar, the really Eventually, crap David one. That the children will be able to use the system without adult help. Some of the older people... Do that size of that screen! ...to teach virtual learning... The to amount of friends. radiation blasting in that guy's face. It was right next to his skull. Yeah. You used to have to have deep desks back then, didn't you, to accommodate the massive, massive CRT. I, some people, some people can't talk properly. I have them inside. I, in people, don't those glasses are like proper nineties. If you ever opened a, a, an issue of Crash or Your Sinclair, the reviewers in those magazines would have glasses like that. Football. Football. I saw you making the football bounce around on the screen. You like doing that? Yeah. Soon this system will have proper sound effects, lots more symbols, and you'll be it's able to... a bit like an early GTA, isn't it? ...to a world with you. Look at that. Amazing. Well, nobody says virtual reality will ever replace real play or ordinary lessons, but it's an excellent way of getting to do stuff that you don't do ordinarily. Me, I'm learning how to be a helicopter pilot, if rather badly. Get the fuck away from that house then, man! If you're in a helicopter... <laughs> And now a preview of Lemmings 2 for the Amiga and PC hot off the pro. Oh, Lemmings 2. When completed, this game will have 12 new tribes jointly capable... Nah, it didn't add anything, though, did it? It just detract, detracted from the main gameplay. It's a good game still. It's not as good as the original. Tribe, you need to be able to ski and scoop in order to survive. Lemmings 2 was due out this week, but as only 35 of the skills have been created in time, they've had to put it back. It'll now be out in February. Ooh, Mr. Christmas period. The world just became the newest arcade, too. I bet DMA Design were not happy with that. It has transformed its basement or into an electronic arcade. Fun for kids and parents alike. It's wow. a very civilised coffee bar. I'll take two sugars, thank you. Now that is what I want to do. I want to open up a retro coffee bar with retro machines everywhere. It would be awesome. Act Razor on the SNES. Due out in February, and you're a god. Well, almost. You get to save six lands from evil enslavers. It's a bit small, isn't it, compared to the enemy? What are those things called? The bad guys and start to horsey, horsey man. Yeah, it's a horsey man. The long-awaited sequel to our type will be available for the Game Boy in January. Hey. And it's even more fiendish than the original. 
nothing one quite one as nostalgic as a Game Boy screen. But this time in your new improved R9. It's quite unique, isn't it? A shoot 'em up to go. I've heard it's even more difficult than getting a compliment out of Nam Rude. We wanted to bring you some hot news from the USA this week, but when I rang Z to find out what was going down stateside, his mother. Feels like Nam, mate. Um, I'm sorry, love. I think he's gone shopping. This is Sears Department Store in Eastern Seattle. Capitalism. Like a lot of stores here. They Go and buy some technology. Sears Department. But it's not with the electrical goods, or even with the... Why, why was there a plant on top of that now TV? Video games or best and accessory. What? What? Clothes? Nintendo dominates over here. One in every three American homes has at least one piece of Nintendo hardware. So, in most game shops, the Sega display tends to be much smaller, quieter, and strangely hedgehoggy. Man, I used to love it, those, those cabinets in shops like that. They're giving away free radios to encourage... Look at that, walk, look at that radio player. Sega branded. How cool is that? ...based on Sonic. Nintendo the days when you had to carry a separate radio player, a separate games machine, Super Mario Brothers, a separate camera, as the Brooklyn Plum so many things, all integrated into our mobile phones. But now I'm gonna make you really sick. If that makes me happy or sad. The difference between Britain and America is the prices. Over here, you can get a Genesis. Uh, this is what you call a Mega Drive. For a small box. Go fit in that boxes. Which is about fifty pounds. A Super NES is also ninety-nine dollars, about a third of the price in Britain. The games are often half the price, and you lucky, lucky scamps. Eagerly, I'm going to pay much more. Super Mario Land Two for the Game Boy. Everything was so much more expensive. That's why we were stuck Another with Spectrums and NES. Commodores and went well Mario into the nineties. New three D graphics, and of course, there's the edutainment package, Mario Paint. Mario Paint, when that came out, that was... I don't know, that was quite compelling, wasn't it? Big hot games, we've got a couple of new... Paint program on a console, it was opening up new worlds. I had the Mega Drive one, it was called... Let, let's Paint, or I can't, I can't remember what it was called, but... There was never a mouse with the Mega Drive, so it was using the control pad. I, 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 you, I think you could... You might be able to get a mouse, but it was very hard to get hold of. For a vacation and fancy but using the control pad with a paint program is not the nicest experience. Sega games will work on British kit, but the only Nintendo ones that will are Game Boy games. Oh yeah, by the way, Master System so games will too. They are multi-region. More girls to buy games. Barbie, brilliant. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this moment, Furtless. I've just finished my time machine. Oh, what's he playing? When I flick this switch. Time itself will run backwards, which reminds me. Here's a cheat for Back to the Future 3 on the Mega Drive. Mm. Simply pause the game. Back to the Future. Hold down A and press up, down, left, right to skip levels. And now to test my time machine. <laughs> that is some nice camera the effects. They jiggled the camera. Levels skip to left, right, down, up, press then A, down, hold, then game the pause. Mega Drive, the on three future, the two back, cheat, are here. That was quite well done then. Impressive. Rude, Nam, ridden, good. Now for the results of our battery test. Remember, we've been playing the machines continuously since 9.30 this morning. The first one ran out less than an hour later. Was it up to a crucial point? It was, yeah. Oh, but Game Gear went first. Well, I'm afraid you don't get more batteries. I oh, know. Next to bite the dust was the link. What batteries did they use? I, I didn't catch up the start. Crucial stage in the game. Uh, yeah. I was that is crucial. Job is, man. <laughs> so far, just what we expected. The Game Gear and the Lynx have both got coloured screens, which means... I'm surprised the Lynx lasted longer. The next machine... That is the Lynx 2, I guess. That did have improved battery life. ...before we started recording the programme this afternoon. What's that? About... Eight hours. Eight hours. Well, that's a good of course, they had backlights which were uh, powered by conventional so, style bulbs, didn't the they? Boy, Not LEDs. About 20 hours. Which means that the running costs for all these machines on standard batteries are as follows. For the Game Boy, about 8p an hour. Yeah, not bad. For the Supervision, Supervision. <laughs> Did anyone own the Supervision? I had some, a couple of decent games. And double that for the Game Boy. Four pounds per hour. For the Game Gear, my word, that is excessive. Yeah, two or three hours a day for a year. The money you've spent on that. You can see how the Game uh, Game Boy penetrated a larger share of market there. Thank you, Violet. Or a top-of-the-range hi-fi. Even in the face of the 
far better technology in the links and uh, what it means is that if you practice color the game of the game gear. it takes you about 40 hours it will cost you somewhere in the region of 150 pounds makes you think doesn't it we only use standard batteries for our tests the answer for longer gameplay is of course long life batteries they cost nearly twice as much but they last up to four times longer so they're good value and this machine will run at about three pounds an hour or rechargeable batteries, but rechargeable batteries back then didn't last very well, did they? Value for money, and yes, they're environmentally friendly. But for handheld, especially the colour screens, they're not so good because they lose their charge so quickly. They don't stay charged for a very long yeah. time, and they'll be fading out before you pass level. I used to have a load of those Uniros batteries. So if you want long game play, play your handheld with the sound down because the battery power lasts a lot longer. And if all else fails, of course, and dim your screen if you can. The mains adapter is what you need, isn't it? Ooh. But that defeats the object of the handheld, doesn't it? And now, some more games reviews. Uh, you can plug it into your car. The game this week is Axelayer, futuristic if you had the car. snares. The battle for the galaxy is on. Against deadly aliens, you're the only one who can save the day if you can get past level one. See, a lot of people get upset when this is a people game. pronounce things as snares. I think SNES was used a lot more over in the UK than in, in America. I think in America, I'm afraid I'm still people say SNES. It makes you feel really seasick because the graphics scroll so so quicker to say SNES. I quite till when I first got to this bit. Since then, I've been here plenty of times. It's so difficult to get past the first level, unless you play it on easy. It's a very good looking game, and the music's great. There's a brilliant choice of weapons, and the choice gets better on each level. I do like the Super Nintendo's effects. I'll certainly think about buying this game, even though it's so tough. It's quite a slow processor, but it's it FX chips made up for it considerably. You do get into it, it's really good. Graphics here are great and the enemies keep changing. I particularly like the second level, but it's just a bit hard at the beginning. This is just shit. It's a bit like our type now, isn't it? I like collecting things, so I like the power up. Oh, I like her jumper. Check that out. Check it on one side, flowery on the other, she is. And the scores for Axley, the boys gave it wearing five, some but the girls style. Score three out of five. Oh yeah. The Curse of Enchanted is released this week for Amiga and PC. The hero Brad is shackled to and has to escape for a labyrinth of rooms and caves. Here's Giles. What are we reviewing today? PC or the Amiga version? The Amiga version. We did do quite a few re Amiga reviews back in the early uh, uh, series. Give me a key when This is when Amiga was pretty much dominating the home computer market, or doing very well. I'll use this key to free myself. Before the PC really took over. Of course, which I'm um, changed to. In the UK, at least. I mean, it was a completely different scene yeah, in the US. The ice a. Queen's bullets. Otherwise, I'll turn into a block of ice, which will send me right back to the left of the screen. There's all these icons you can pick up, look at, or attack things, or jump them. I'll definitely buy this game. It's as good as Monkey Island. It's 35 quid, mate. That's a lot of pocket money. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think... Oh, I've got a cup of tea. For money. Thanks for the <laughs> reminder. Great in game. At first, it looks good, but you have to be a real lateral thinker to get anywhere. I gave this game 3 out of 5. That's because it's not my kind of game. But if you like these kind of games, you'll love this one. And the score well, That's a strange the entrance the there. The that's very um, euphemistic. Looks a bit... Out of five. <laughs> Sexual. More games review details in the Data Blast. To access that, you know what to do. Set your video to record now. Yes, I do. Last week, we asked you to name the cowboy character made famous by Robert Redford. The answer was the Sundance Kid, and the first correct winner out of the hat was Gemma Gray from Newcastle in Staffordshire. We'll be sending this game gear with TV. Well done, here. Gemma. Terrific. This week's competition prize, we're giving away a Mega Drive with Sonic 1 and Sonic wow. 2 and the Bad Wow, good prize. To win those, tell us on a postcard or a stuck-down envelope the name of the hedgehog in the Beatrix Potter story. I always wonder where, <laughs> always makes me wonder whether these prizes were actually sent out because, you know, they could just say, here's a prize, and then just not actually send it out. I'm sure they were. magazine, it's full of information and behind the scenes gossip. Ooh, tape on the front. Look, Berlin, so I recommend that you get it. Let's see that. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for Bad Influence and via Saturday morning, 9.25 for What's Up Doc. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, here's the data blast. So, um, pause it. Check out what was happening on the 19th of November, 1992. Uh, these titles were done on a Amiga, I believe. All these end titles. Just like an Amiga was used for Babylon 5. And lots of other graphics. Various programs. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you again soon.